Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Now, we, we've been out of production for the holiday season. We're back in production, and we've got, we got a lot of ground we got to cover. If you've uh, heard about uh, the investigation into Todd Bentley's sexual <laughs> behaviors and uh, would like a way of kind of understanding the statement that was made and all that kind of stuff, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like the video, ring the bell, so that you can be notified when we update the channel. Now, this is a very tragic event, and I, and I mean that in the truest sense. This is very tragic. And the person I am concerned about the most right now is Todd Bentley. Why? Because he's an impenitent sexual and this impenitence of his literally jeopardizes his salvation. And what needs to happen for Todd Bentley's sake is that he is forcibly removed from any and all type of ministry activity for his own sake, and also because he's shown that he is a of many different types, including a sexual All of that being said, we're going to take a look uh, we're going to start off by taking a look at Dr. Michael Brown's statement that he made on the 2nd of January of 2020 regarding Todd Bentley. He, uh, he, didn't, he didn't participate in the investigation. He made sure the investigation into Todd Bentley was handled properly is the way he's talked about it. And I'm going to take issue with some of the things that Dr. Brown has said. But we're also going to note that this, this investigative committee they did the right thing by warning the body of Christ about Todd Bentley. So here's what the official statement says. Uh, As followers of Jesus, we delight in God's mercy and grace and believe in the power of restoration and forgiveness. At the same time, we recognize that God's word holds leaders in the church to high standards since they serve as representatives of Christ himself. So the question before us is this. Does Todd Bentley, founder of Fresh Fire Ministries, live up to those standards? Is he qualified to be a recognized leader in the church? Now, I'm going to make this claim right up front. Moral moral qualifications are only part of what is required in order to be a leader in the church. In fact, I'm going to interrupt myself here and kind of point this out. We're going to be taking a look at Titus, Titus chapter 1. And we're going to note that uh, some of the qualifications for a leader in Christ's church do include moral requirements. Uh, So Paul here says to uh, Titus, This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained in order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you, if anyone is above reproach. So yeah, you got to be above reproach. The husband of one wife, Todd Bentley does not qualify there. His children are believers and and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer, as God's steward, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. So, listen, nobody ever really legitimately challenges the moral qualifications to being a pastor or a leader in Christ's church. Everybody recognizes that. But the problem is, is that Todd Bentley has demonstrated that he has never been qualified to be a leader, a teacher, a pastor, or anything in Christ's church, because the next part comes into play. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine, and also to rebuke those who contradict it. And then it goes on, for there are many who are insubordinate, they are empty talkers, they are deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. In fact, I'm going to make this statement up front, that from the moment Todd Bentley showed up on the scene, he has been a deceiver. Yeah. So there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers, deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party, and they must be silenced, for they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. So you'll note 
that being a pastor, a leader in Christ's church, yes, you have to be morally upstanding, but you also need to be able to teach sound doctrine, what's in accord with sound doctrine, and to rebuke those who contradict it. Todd Bentley, from the word go, has been a person who has been teaching for shameful gain things he ought not to teach. He's a deceiver. He has never had any gift from the Holy Spirit to do anything in the church, and I'm making that claim up front. And if you listen to his doctrine, you listen to his claims, you would note this. So he was never qualified. From the moment somebody put him on the stage, he was not qualified. And instead, he's been, from the beginning, an obvious deceiver, charlatan, false prophet, and that's what he's been. And I've been saying this the entire time. But I'm very disappointed in Michael Brown and this committee because they they are now saying, well, he's not qualified. He's never been qualified. And if you followed the biblical standard, you would have noted that and done something about it all the way back then. But I digress. Let me let me come back to our statement that we were reading. So the signers of the statement, so the question is, is, is Todd Bentley qualified to be recognized as a leader in the church? No, he's never been qualified. But the signers of the statement are leaders in ministry who are asked to review a matter that invokes these beliefs and to judge the fitness of a person for ministry according to biblical standards. No, I would say only according to half the biblical standards. Uh, according to biblical standards, uh, to judge the fitness of the person for ministry and, you know, and the leading of the Holy Spirit. In conducting such investigation, there are limits on what can be known with certainty, but we look carefully at long-term track records and the accumulated testimony of many witnesses. The opinion we have reached here is theological, answering the question, does Todd Bentley, founder of Fresh Fire Ministries, live up to the high standards required of those who serve as representative of Christ? Is he qualified according to our understanding of biblical standards to be recognized as leader in the church? As part of this process, we sought to hear Todd's side directly, but he declined to answer a list of 60 questions compiled by the investigator after initially agreeing to respond, which I would point out, that's pattern. That's a pattern with Todd Bentley that goes all the way back to 2008. I'll show that in a minute here. Uh, so uh, Todd Bentley required the investigator to submit the questions through his attorney, which after which he ceased communicating with Dr. Brown or the investigator. Based upon our careful review of numerous firsthand reports, some of them dating back to 2004, we state our theological opinion and can say with one voice that without a doubt, Todd is not qualified to serve in leadership or ministry today. I'm glad that they came to this conclusion, but he's never been biblically qualified to be in leadership in Christ church, ever, ever, even before there were allegations of sexual <laughs> behavior. Okay, so there are credible accusations of a steady pattern of ungodly and immoral behavior. Yes, there, there are. Confirmed by an independent investigator's interviews dating from 2008 through 2019. And that's an important part, is that um, their investigation included sexual <laughs> behavior that he engaged in all the way up to 2019. This is Todd Bentley, you're going to hear him say, oh, this is all in the past. This has all been dealt with and all this kind of stuff, but he is a habitual, habitual liar and a deceiver, and he has been from the beginning. So, you know, so uh, so uh, the independent investigator interviews made back to 2004, 2008, through 2019, along with other testimonies dating back to 2004, and while we only took into account first-hand reports, there are many other second- and third-hand reports repeating the same accusations, often from people in different parts of the country or the world, who had no connection between them other than their interaction with Todd. We love Todd and believe that he has been supernaturally gifted by God. And this is the part where I'm going to take big issue, okay? And I'm going to note that back in the end of the summer, when new allegations surfaced, the reason why those allegations surfaced on the internet 
rather than were handled internally is because Rick Joyner would have nothing to do with the latest round of allegations and even publicly shamed the people who were coming forward and coming to him and saying, you need to listen to us, there's a problem. And so what ended up happening is, is that they went through all the routes to try to hold Todd Bentley accountable, to raise the, uh, the red flag, to blow the whistle, to get the attention of the people who should be acting as oversight for Todd Bentley. And they basically said, we don't see anything here. The problem's with you. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? They said, fine, we're going to go public. And joining in with them and going public was Patricia King. And I found myself in one of the most awkward positions ever in my time of doing, doing fighting for the faith. And what I mean is, is that I found myself agreeing with Patricia King. I've never done that. <laughs> Until until the end of the summer of 2019. First time I ever agreed with Patricia King was about her saying that he was a sexual. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, just, it was it was a weird thing. But anyway, so I, I'm going to take issue with this and we're going to demonstrate this from his history. He's never had a supernatural gift. And when the allegations came out initially in the summer, uh, Michael Brown, Doc Ops. Uh, Doc, he's the doctor of obfuscation. He, he came up with this really clever Bible twisting that basically says, well, once you have a gift from the Holy Spirit, you can operate in it even if you're sexually immoral. And he did it by twisting the, the story of Gideon. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, well, we might even take a look at that. But anyway, so we love Todd and believe that he has, a supernat is, has been supernaturally gifted by God. No, he hasn't. And uh, our highest joy would be to see Todd coming before God and the community of believers in humility and repentance, openly desiring uh, help to get his life fully healed and surrendered to Jesus. Sadly, we see no signs of true lasting repentance. Exactly. <laughs> there have never been signs of Todd Bentley's repentance. Only signs that the major leaders within the charismatic and the NAR movements have been trying to resuscitate him or make it look like he'd been restored because what was at stake was their own false theology. Yeah, you get the point. So, yeah, they, they've they made it very clear, unequivocally clear, that Todd Bentley is not qualified presently for ministry. I would note biblically, the moral aspect of it is only one half of it. And he's never been qualified to be in any kind of ministry. But all that being said, let's uh, take a look at Todd Bentley's response, because this is educational. This is like a master class on, on complete deflection, uh, redirection of blame. I mean, you, you, this is just a master class in basically claiming that he's a victim. I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. But uh, let's listen to uh, Todd Bentley's uh, response that he posted on his Facebook when this um, document first came out. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is uh, a video <clears throat> that I need to put out there to address just a few things. And I want to start off by saying Happy New Year. I can't wait to moving forward in 2020, like many of you, and put the past behind us. It doesn't sound like he's substantively, substantively interacting with the conclusion of this independent investigation. This is going to be the greatest, not just year, but decade of harvest. God is raising up a whole new wineskin of ministry and leadership. Whole new wineskin coming, folks. Oh, man, he can't wait to be a part of it. No shame. And we do not want to get distracted by some of the things that the enemy is wanting to really distract the church with. I, for one... Yeah, it's just a distract. This is all a satanic distraction. My wife, Jessa Bentley, and our team here have decided after nearly six months of public 
Facebook and tribunals and investigations. Could you imagine almost half a year? In fact, what many don't know behind the scenes is that it started in January, almost a whole year now since I was on a trip in Russia. I've been dealing with a lot of behind the scenes things. And I thank God I've had this year, really all of 2019, all of last year, to really evaluate in my life areas that I knew I wanted to come higher in. Areas he wanted to come higher in. Come higher. <clears throat> okay. I, I'm going to pause right there. We're going to add a little bit of context to this. Now, do you all remember back in the summer of 2017, Todd Bentley was down in Texas and he claimed that uh, a, a fellow who had uh, engaged, well, had overdosed on drugs was brought to the Texas Medical Center and was raised from the dead, raised from the dead uh, by uh, his family members having the live stream of the, well, the thing that was going on in Texas. Yeah, I, I'm not making this up. Uh, we, we, we did a video on this called Resurrection Overdose. Uh, we'll put a link to it, uh, you know, up here. Yeah, the, let's see. I got it. Yeah, there we go. Up, up in that direction. We'll put a link up to it in its entirety. But I want you to hear the statement that Todd Bentley made at the time. A quick testimony. It just happened. We're still in the hospital. We're at the Houston Medical Center. My brother, 26 years old, overdosed on heroin, was pronounced dead on a raw bowl. D-O-A. We played tonight's meeting on our cell phone, and his body, we started praying, he was just raised from the dead in the Houston Medical Center. Resurrection from the dead. Died of heroin overdose. Watched the broadcast live. And we just had a confirmed resurrection of the dead after a 26-year-old boy died of a heroin overdose, pronounced DOA dead on the rival. And we just got to search down this story, but we're getting it in right now. It's happening. Yeah. So, by the way, I made a phone call to the Texas Medical Center to ask for confirmation of this resurrection from the dead. And, and they kind of treated me like I had like a third eyeball or, a, you know, an ear sticking out of my head, right out of my forehead. They, could, they couldn't make heads or tails of what I was asking them. That's all documented in the video. Again, it's called Todd Bentley Resurrection Overdose. Now, while all of that was happening, okay, while all of that was happening in 2017 while he was in Texas, but Todd Bentley was sexually preying on a woman who had, uh, you know, was experiencing a difficult marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, she's now spoken out, by the way, and uh, Todd Bentley, Victim Speaks. This is uh, from Patricia King's channel, and we'll just kind of let her tell a little bit of the story. In 2017, I was invited to a revival happening in Lindell, Texas. At the time, I was super excited. It was something a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but it was in, in an atmosphere that I'd never been in. But I was excited nonetheless. I'd never heard of Todd Bentley. But I knew whatever was happening in Lindell was big. I was hearing of all the healings that were happening and um, gems being found on the ground. And it was just something that I wanted to check out. So I remember the night that I was invited, asking my husband if he'd care if I went. And he was okay with it. So I went with some friends of mine from church. And it was a great time. Like, I was just impressed with how God was moving in Lindell and what was happening. And then it just seemed to get bigger and bigger as time was going on. So it turned in from that one night, started to happen a little bit more frequently. And I remember even like the first time I went into the prayer line and trust me, it took a few times. I was outside of my comfort zone, but um, I remember going into the prayer line one night and Todd Bentley ended up giving me like a prophetic word that night. And it was just, it was big for me. It was the first time that I felt noticed by God in a while. And it was just different. And I was excited. So 
I remember going on Facebook and trying to learn a little bit more about Todd Bentley. I'd been going for like a week or so, and I just, I didn't know really anything about him. And so I found his ministry page on Facebook, and I liked it and followed it. And I even remember going to like his personal page and uh, having too many friends, and so I couldn't even send a friend request. And at that time, I kind of, I, oh, I sent him a message. I sent Todd a message on his ministry page on Facebook, just, you know, thanking him for coming to Lindell. Uh, thank you for allowing God to use him. And I was like, I was one of the people that you prayed for tonight and had a prophetic word for, and I'm just blown away by how God uses you. Shortly thereafter, Todd replies back. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. I'm glad you came. Look forward to seeing you again. And then not long after that, Todd even sends me a friend request from his personal page. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's awesome. It's Todd Bentley, and God's really using him. And so I was excited to get a friend request from him. So I kept going to the revival as much as I could, um, as long as my husband was okay with it. And I ended up going pretty regularly for a little while. Um, not a whole lot because my husband and I had kids, and so I went as I could, but, you know, just whenever he was okay with me going. So at some point in our Facebook friendship and just kind of going through the revival, Todd reached out to me on his personal page, Messenger, and was like, hey, I'd really like to chat with you more. Here's my cell phone number, and he gives, gives me his personal cell phone, and I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> okay, awesome. Like, here's my chance. God's getting me into the ministry. I'm finally I'm going to be able to step into my calling. And so, of course, I text Todd. Um, I knew he was married, but I also know that I was married. And even though my f husband and I were kind of in a rocky place in a relationship, I mean, I text my pastor and his wife all the time, and so I kind of just looked at it as the same way, like, this is a safe place. And so I start, you know, kind of giving some, texting Todd, you know, information about me, my marriage, and just kind of where I'm at. And we start building just this kind of... Now, note, she divulged to him privately where she was with her marriage, when it, which she's already said was rocky at the time. So he knows she's got a rocky marriage that's part of the information here. a friendship through text message and um kind of he's like well you know what send me a picture so i can remember who you are like i want to remember who i'm praying for and i'm going to be praying for your marriage and all this and so i snap him a, a selfie and i send it to him he's like okay yeah i remember you um you know wow you're really beautiful and i'm like thanks and so he's like well you know next time you come to the prayer line I'll make sure to give you an extra long hug. So just so you know that you're special to me. Um, Susan doesn't really get me a let, let me get away with much else. And so I'm like, that's fine and appreciate that. Well, as I continue going to the revival, um, continually texting between Todd and I. And one thing leads to another on text messages. And he ends up asking me for um, a picture of my breast. So... I'm a little shaken, but at the same time, it's Todd Bentley. Like, I don't want to tell Todd no only because of his cloud in ministry. And I, I know that's terrible to say, but I really felt like I knew it was wrong, but I wasn't going to say no. During the time that Todd and I were texting, as he was requesting pictures of um, not just who I was so that he could remember me from the prayer line, but also of my breast. He also sent me pictures of himself, but also of his genitalia. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we, we got, we got a problem here. So while, Todd is doing the revival down in Texas, claiming that a guy who um, was at the Texas Medical Center, dead on arrival, drug overdose, raised from the dead. He was also predatorially sexting 
with a woman who divulged to him that she was having a rocky marriage. My, my question is, why should I believe that God raised anybody from the dead or healed anybody through Todd Bentley while he was engaging in this blatant immoral behavior? Yeah, well, yeah so you, you kind of get the idea. Well, let's come back to Todd Bentley's um, response video because it just tells us a lot about Todd Bentley. And I thank God I have zero, no unconfessed sin from my past, whether it was in the last year or whether it was in the last, I, I guess there was a statement about talking to individuals about sin from 2014. The standard is not whether or not you have unconfessed sin. That's not the standard for being a pastor and a leader in Christ's church. The standard is above reproach, husband of one wife. In other words, sexually chaste. So, you know, and by the way, the past is only one second away. You know, so I can say, if, using this standard, I can say, well, you know, there's, there's no issue of any unconfessed sin from my past in my life. You know, as long as 10 seconds ago, I also confessed my sin and asked for forgiveness. So notice he's not interacting with any kind of biblical standard. He's just kind of, all of this is already dealt with. This is all already confessed sin and stuff. That it's okay that we can have zero relationship with people that want to form a panel and then just make judgments, though they've never one time talked to me and never even talked to me other than one tribunal judge. My yeah, that's because you wouldn't talk to them. And when they asked if you would answer questions, you required them to send the questions through your criminal attorney. You're the one who cut off communication. It's not like they didn't attempt to try to talk to you, Todd. They did. And you wouldn't. Entire life. It leads me to believe the church does not want a place where we can just launch investigations and private investigations and then have a panel of five people write about anybody. It's sad to me that not even the tribunal judges have made the attempt to come to our other side to ask us the hard questions about. That's not what they've said publicly. They've made it very clear. They, they tried to include you in all of this. You initially said that you would participate, and then you didn't. Again, I want to be clear. Past, no unaddressed, confessed, past sin. My wife is on the broadcast standing with me. In our the standard is not no unaddressed, unconfessed, past sin. That's not the standard for being a leader in Christ's church. It includes a moral standard as well as a doctrinal standard, you, you've never met any. Family, we want that respect and privacy. We want the time. I stepped down in many ways from ministry almost six months ago, last year in September, you know, after our crusade in August. Nearly. I mean, I mean he's, he's practically stepped down anyway, you know, for like six months and stuff. It's a, it's a self-imposed timeout that he engaged in, apparently. Bible Harvest America, I've begun to step down from all church leadership ministry things so I could take extra time to pray and seek God and get healed up. So you can take extra time to pray. Well, that'll fix everything right up. And it's been painful to have to address publicly on Facebook, which is unbiblical in the first place. It's been the most painful process you could imagine, guys to try to defend myself when I just don't even believe there's a place in the gospel for the need to defend ourselves because we know the true heart and nature of the gospel. And if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. That goes for me as it does for any that feel the need to judge me on old, old, old sin. That Old, 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 I mean, old, 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 you know. Yet the, um, the investigator said that the uh, sins included things that happened in 2019. The victim who just came forward and recorded her account uh, for Patricia King's channel, that was in 2017. Yeah. It's not proven to be adultery. That was not proven to be any of the craziest, most vicious Stephen Powell accusations and allegations. We've disproved everything that was in Stephen Powell's letter. You, you did? Who, who's, who's the we there? To my, me, not only me, but my team of leaders. 
Oh, your team of leaders disproved all of that. Uh huh. Reputable men of character, like Ficus. Rick Joyner wouldn't have Doctor, you know, or, or Michael Ficus on his team in leadership if he wasn't a man of character and faith. So, so uh, Doctor Michael Ficus, he's he's disproven all of these things. That's weird because you know the independent investigators claim that they verified that there are subs the substantial evidence of egregious sexual misconduct on your part. That's weird. I mean, you can't find somebody even more theologically knowledge of the scripture, I'm convinced, than Michael Ficus. And Lewis, him and his wife, 34 years of marriage, a pastor in Jacksonville, Florida, and all of a sudden, many of the others that have, have stood up and many that have been with me for more than a decade that know a lot of even my past struggles. Some of it goes back to Lakeland, Florida. We dealt with this, guys. And the claim that there was stuff up to 2000. Did, did, we, did, did we deal with this? Did, did, did we really? Because the, the claim is, is that there's evidence coming all the way up to 2019. 19, not even true. We proved it to be false, at least with our own independent internal investigations. Right, their, in, their internal independent investigation. By the way, internal and independent, that's an oxymoron. That, that's, like, that's a contradiction. Internal and independent, that's, that doesn't exist. You either had an internal investigation or you had an independent investigation. There's no such thing as an independent internal investigation. Yeah, let me back this up because, boy, this is, I mean, this tells me a lot about Todd Bentley. His wife, 34 years of marriage, a pastor in Jacksonville, Florida, and all of a sudden, many of the others that have, have stood up and many that have been with me for more than a decade that know a lot of even my past struggles. Some of it goes back to Lakeland, Florida. We dealt with this, guys. And the claim that there was stuff up to 2019, not even true. We proved it to be false, at least with our own independent internal investigations and investigations upon investigations. Were so they had investigations upon the investigation. I mean, this is like investigations cubed, independent internal investigations of investigations of investigate. I mean, yeah, he, he clearly has proven it to. I would note that the group that Dr. Michael Brown was a part of that was independent uh-huh i even got a criminal lawyer involved people ask y yeah oh, wow yeah we know that which doesn't make any sense by the way I mean, why i got a criminal lawyer because there were criminal things going on not only the sharing of my private information and and the process in which people stole by the way uh when you read the second the second letter that Dr. Michael Brown put out there, the final, final statement, he noted that um, Todd Bentley's criminal attorney sent their independent investigative team a cease and desist order to cease and desist the investigation. And they ignored it because they weren't doing anything illegal. They weren't. So just want to point that out. Files from our ministry and illegally hacked into not only my social media, but... Now, now here comes his explanation. So how, Todd Bentley, do you explain, um, you know, like one of your victims claimed that she was in conversation with you using Facebook Messenger, and it was from your private account that requests to see her breasts... Uh, came in and that you had sent her uh, photographs of your junk. All right. So how did that happen? It, this, this is his narrative as to how this took place. I'm going to back this up just a little bit and listen to this one. See if this sounds plausible to you. Why I got a criminal lawyer because there were criminal things going on, not only the sharing of my private information and, and the process in which people stole files from our ministry and illegally hacked into not only my social media, but people that have been proven, and I just don't want people in prison, that have been proven to take my private social media details and even fabricate and act as if they were me on Facebook and social media, not only. So there it is. So how this happened is that Todd, somebody, you know, was impersonating him on social media, hacked into his ministry files, 
happened to come across a photograph of Todd Bentley's genitalia, and then while pretending to be Todd Bentley, engaged in sexing activity with this woman whose marriage was on the rocks, all in order to make it look like Todd Bentley was engaging in sexually inappropriate activity in order to destroy him. That's his explanation. How many accounts we shut down weekly of people claiming to be Todd Bentley on Facebook anyways? And yeah, on a weekly basis, at least four or five, maybe 10 or 12, you know, different fake accounts. They're, they're constantly having to shut those down, man. Constantly. It happens like, you know, several times a day. Proving these things. This, we don't want people to end up in prison because they... No, notice the threat. We don't want anyone to end up in prison. So, yeah, you better back off, man. Back off. Worked for a nonprofit organization, received money, and shared in the internal conspiracy that Patricia King has been proven linked to since Patricia King in 2008 publicly said to my wife that she was Jezebel. Patricia King, that is not. Yeah, in 2008, Jessa was not Jessa Bentley, she was Jessa somebody. And she was an intern at the Lakeland Revival whom you had an adulterous affair with and you were married at the time. And you, know, and you had how many children? You committed adultery with Jessa and you're upset because in the moment in 2008 when all that came out, Patricia King said of Jessa that she was Jezebel. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, so he's making it sound like, can you believe that Patricia King would call my wife Jezebel? Well, she wasn't your wife at the time. She was your adulterous mistress. Mother, Patricia King has been found lying. And we have her in audio and we have her in text message. I will hold Patricia King accountable. Do not believe those things when we have the evidence. We don't want to leak the four hours of audio. You can't make up audio. We do not want to leak the corruption that has been proven and the lies that have been proven and told. So Todd Bentley is a victim, man. He's a victim of a complete conspiracy. The mastermind of this conspiracy is Patricia King. And, and Patricia King has been sending her spies into social media to create false Todd Bentley accounts and engage in salacious communications with unsuspecting women to make it appear that he is a uh, sexual. Uh huh. All right. Now, I've made the claim that Todd Bentley never was qualified to be in ministry, ever. And what we're seeing here is 2008 all over again. And he's never been a penitent. He's always been a deceiver. He's never been capable of rightly handling a biblical text. I mean, I'll be blunt. Todd Bentley could not properly exegete a biblical text, even if I gave him a printout of a Martin Luther sermon for Christmas, and all he had to do was read it. He still wouldn't be capable of rightly handling the text. I'm just saying. All of that being said, let's go back in time. Florida outpouring, June 4th, 2008. While this was being recorded, Todd Bentley was already in an adulterous affair with Jessa. Oh, there is such a great anointing in this building tonight, and I know you need to get ready right now in your home, sitting right in front of your computer, because you're going to receive it. Listen, I'm telling you, we are receiving so many testimonies and reports from all over the world of people that are being healed, being raised up off of their deathbed, even testimonies of the healing of terminal illness and cancer and stories of... Now, remember, this is 2008. This isn't, this isn't 2017 where he pulled that same stunt. This is 2008, which means he was pulling these stunts all the way back then. People being raised from the dead. Now, I believe in integrity in what God is doing. 
And we love the testimony of Jesus. How many of you love testimonies? There's something very prophetic. There's a declaration in the testimony. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There's something about when... The testimony of Jesus is referring to preaching and proclaiming what Jesus has done and said. You want to know what the testimony of Jesus looks like and sounds like? Read one of the four Gospels. We testify, we're prophesying. When we testify, we're declaring. We're not just hearing about the works of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, that was awesome. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, he can't even rightly handle a biblical text. Told you. There is a prophetic anointing that comes in the testimony and an invitation for that miracle to be duplicated in the testimony. Uh, uh, where are you getting that? And, we and again, this is 2008. Just run back through his messages that are on YouTube in 2008, and you can see this guy never could handle a biblical text. The qualifications for a leader in Christ's church is he must be able to rightly teach sound doctrine, rebuke those who contradict it. We must testify of his mighty works. We must prophesy. We must declare. We must speak out into the heavens that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. I am the Lord and I change not. We must testify to the world. We must testify to the demonic powers and principalities that Jesus Christ is the same today. Yeah, totally abusing biblical texts here. He's buying into John Wimber's power evangelism thingy, uh, which also Bill Johnson teaches that without the demonstration of signs and wonders, the gospel apparently is powerless. And we want to hear your testimony. We want to hear your testimony of how God's touched you, how God's healed you, how God's going to touch you and heal you tonight. And at the same time, we have a great responsibility. And when we're talking about lifting up the name of Jesus, we want to see Jesus get all the glory through every avenue. I'm telling you right now, we want people to know that Jesus is alive, not because we said so, not because we preach so, but because there's a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. We want... Yeah, not because the Bible said so, but because there has to be a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. That false doctrine is the setup for the false miracle signs and wonders show that was the Todd Bentley revivals. Outstanding, verified, unrefutable miracles, and we know that our God is able. Verified, unrefutable miracles. We'll talk about that in a second, too. He doesn't need us to hype it up. My God doesn't need our help. Either Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday, and he will be the same forever, or he's not. And if he's the same, we can expect what we read about in the Bible. And if Jesus went about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil, and he healed every sickness and every disease among the people, then why should we not expect today the same realm? Realm of miraculous, the same realm of Holy Spirit demonstration. I am the Lord and I change not. I believe the Bible. Oh, he sounds so brave here. I believe the Bible. Well, so how many miracles did you actually perform there, Todd? Let's talk about what he talks about here, you know, in a second here. We are doing our best job with the tens of thousands of testimonies, people. Tens of thousands of testimonies, man. They're doing their best job. Claiming that they've been touched and healed and delivered and set free. And even unexplainable stories. Unexplainable, man. Stories, though. We're doing our best. I mean, I have brought on a staff. Whole staff happened to be sleeping with one of them full-time staff that are on the phone and on the computers and, and, and working with the media 
so that we can find the testimonies that can working with the media to find the test bring credibility to the name of jesus we are doing our best we are keeping a database of literally tens of thousands of names database man that sounds technologically amazing of people being healed right now all right so let's uh take a look at the nightline report uh that um, came out in 2008 and uh, well, we'll start with Todd Bentley's qualifications to, you know, to be a leader in the church. That comes up, by the way. Oh, where did you train to be a minister? Um, I trained to be a minister first and foremost. Uh, um, how, how would I, how would I put it? Uh, yeah, where did you train to be a minister? Uh, yeah, uh, how would I put it? That's weird. I, I can say I, I studied to be a minister at American Lutheran Theological Seminary. Yeah, I gra graduated from it as well. Yeah, also got my uh, undergraduate degree in biblical studies, uh, biblical studies and l biblical languages uh, from Concordia University, Irvine. Yeah, I can talk about it that way. Um, my own, like, like, like I, I pursued God. Yes, there were, were so no, no college that, degree, no, no, no college special degree, seminary. no official seminary. I don't have a doctor before my name. I feel kind. Of yeah, it sounds really qualified to me, right? I'm drunk in the spirit. Yeah, I gotta back this up because it's just too amazing when you consider. Put it, um, my own, like, like, like I, I pursued God. Yes, there were, were so no, no college that, degree, no, no, no college special degree, seminary. no official seminary. I don't have a doctor before my name. I feel kind of drunk in the spirit. <laughs> you believe that the healing that you see is real? Absolutely. Why would others believe you? The promise of healing is in the Bible. He forgives my sin, heals my diseases. So let's just be clear here. Have you actually made a blind person, a person who's 100% blind? I have prayed see? for the blind, and we have right now documentation of somebody that was blind that can see. We've had it happen right now. Uh, what's the person's name? And the doctor who verified that they were blind and now see. Here in Lakeland, I have prayed for people that have been deaf, and God has opened their ears. What do you say to people, though, who are not believers in, yeah. in, in this kind of healing? People who um, say, oh, come on, this is a bunch of, of, of hooey. charismatic hooey. Yeah. <laughs> Your word. Well, I know it's not full of hooey because I'm acting on the authority of the word of God and my beliefs. Two, I have evidence by the thousands. Evidence by the thousands. Of people that have claimed healing and are still healed. All of this is. Yeah, all right, so people who claimed healing and are still healed. There's more to this, though. Let's uh, fast forward a little bit into the Nightline investigation. Bentley certainly claims that with God's help, hundreds, if not thousands, have been cured. She's going home to California, send her home with a miracle. His revival has become an international sensation. Broadcast each night around the world on a channel called God TV and on the Internet, Bentley even claims he has cured people while they are watching him from home. Can you supply us with three people who have been cured through miracle with their medical diagnosis their names their doctors so that we can actually what what what, what i'll do see is them talk what i'll three i just need three i mean of of the thousands the, 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 i mean he has a database and stuff of tens of thousands of testimonies i mean three would be like you know well, let's just randomly pick three. That would be pretty easy to do, you know? What we do is give you what we call a media package, which we've made available to other networks. And, and I have one. My media secretary has one. If I have a 1,000 people consenting, I'll give you a 1,000 names. No, I just want three. But we, we, absolutely. We'll give it to you. But we never got three. Instead, we were given a binder filled with what Bentley says are stories of inspiring miracles. It offered incomplete contact information, a few pages of incomplete medical records. Doctors' names were crossed out. Come on! When we pressed further, we were given the name of a woman in California. Her husband told us the tumor on her uterus shrank after she saw Bentley, but he added that may just be coincidence because she was still getting medical treatment. He told us she is far too weak to talk to us. He did send us some of his wife's medical records from a clinic in Tijuana, Mexico, but she apparently insisted on obscuring the clinic's name and the names of the doctors. And so
So, not a single miracle claim of Bentley's could be verified. Not a single one. Yeah, not not one at all. Yet Todd Bentley says, oh, we, we got to demonstrate the power of God, not why, with the miracles from the Bible and stuff, but with stuff that's happening right now. Yet he wasn't able to perform a single miracle. So coming back to um, what Michael Brown's investigative team that he was a part of said, we love Todd and believe that he's been supernaturally gifted by God. There has never been any evidence that he is supernaturally gifted by God. All of the evidence from day one has been that this is a a man who is preying on the body of Christ, preying on women, and making a mess of things, and he has always been a danger and a deceiver and a false prophet. He's never had a gift. In fact, I would note that the Bible warns us explicitly about Todd Bentley. Let me let me kind of make that clear. So I'm going to take this and uh, we're going to go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter and we'll, we'll just note that in uh, 2 Peter uh, the apostle Peter who could operate in the signs of the apostles because he was an apostle of Jesus Christ that he himself points us to the word of God and uh, and makes it clear as he's getting ready to go to his death that he says that we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. When he received honor and glory from God the Father, the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. That's the Bible, by the way, to which you would do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in the darkness until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart, knowing that this, uh, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there were fault, will be false prophets, false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. In their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation is from long ago, it's not idle, and their destruction is not asleep, for God did not despair. Uh, dis uh, did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, committed to the, them to the chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the, un uh, the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishments until the day of judgment, especially those who indulge in lust of defiling passion and despise authority. Bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, they blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant, will also be destroyed in their destruction. Suffering wrong as the wage for the wrongdoing, they count it pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. They are accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs, mists driven by a storm. For, the, for them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. Uh, speaking loud boasts of folly, 
they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption, for whatever overcomes a person to that is the enslaved. For if after they had escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again in, entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. It would have been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit. The sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. So you'll note, Peter's description of false prophets it fits Todd Bentley to a T. And he has always been this way. There has never been a time when he has been a sound teacher of God's Word. He has never had a prophetic gift. He's never had a healing gift. Michael Brown is wrong. He has never operated in any manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He has always been a deceiver. He has always been insatiably motivated by greed and the lusts of the flesh. This is evident in how he has conducted himself the entire time. So I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. You know. So my prayer then goes out to Todd Bentley, because if he does not turn from his sin, and I mean truly turn from it, and seek the mercy and the forgiveness of Christ who has bled and died for these sins, then he will perish eternally, and rightfully so. The sins that he has committed against the body of Christ, the sins that he has committed against Jesus himself in blaspheming God's holy name, and the flim-flam and the shams that he's engaged in, the, the, the behavior that he is engaged in, all of this is so over-the-top blasphemous. And the sad thing is this, is again, coming back to what the statement said, that he had been given a gift from God. No, he has never been given a gift from God. Even the pagans recognized what he was. Todd Bentley has always been a con man, a false teacher, a false prophet, a man who is motivated by his own greed and passions and has never glorified Jesus Christ in anything that he has done. And if he does not repent, like I said, then Peter has pronounced, a real apostle has announced the fate of Todd Bentley, and it's the, the gloom of outer darkness is reserved for him forever if he does not turn from his sin. Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is going to be down below. And so we'll kind of leave it there. Um, you know, until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen.